and if we all learn and then you can switch it up anytime you know what i mean you can definitely like get interactive on your your live cast is good you know what i mean how you got the, the comments popping up but then you got the interactiveness with all the features and this is good i guess for chat or whatever reason spotlighting different people and whatever so we'll try to find it so we look good you, you, you want me to tag you um what did you call it the same thing uh yeah i did but i already got you i can tag you right here all right yeah you can tag me i think i got it all right so did i call yeah i called it the same thing but yeah i appreciate you uh let me post this y'all chris 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 is the master with be live i i have never used this before in my life so he's being gracious this morning and letting me right. take it out the gates try to figure out how to use these tools right so we I guess gotta use this. yeah this is our way of, you got to think about like this is our real way of communicating outside of like the mainstream and you know everyday life I guess you could say because we all get connected with the friends and family that we have in our own lives and whatever whatever but we really do have to get connected deeper on these airways you know what I mean and people have to be kind of open to just loosening themselves up i guess you could say you know and i don't know i don't know i don't get I, the way i think people speak we talk about the unity that we want or that hold on hold on hold on about the unity that we want and things of that nature but they don't never seem to want to go to the extra length to make that happen you know they don't never want to step outside the comfort zone to the you know, interact with people in the way that needs to happen to make the things that we all want come about, you know? Right, right. Well, I think because, what's that, how that song go? Everybody wants to rule the world, right? And it's just like, I don't agree with how you're running the world, and so I'm going to take it over, and I can do a better job with my greedy bastards. I don't like your greedy bastard. And this is what we've been doing, it seems, for the longest time is, you know, we need to build a world community. We need to build a earth community, a human community. But they realize that they can play people off of their emotions and and put their greedy basket. Like I, I, I was thinking about something today. It was, um, you know, and so I was hard on Trump this week. And I was I was real hard on them. So a lot of my Trump friends, they kind of look they're probably down on me a little bit. But, you know, we have to be we have to be honest with everything. And so we've gone the last couple of weeks. You know, we're going right back down the silly war path. And, and we got indicators of this a while ago. The liberals, the left, they knew that they saw that, you know, but we had to give them a chance and we gave them a chance. And I'm not saying we're done giving him a chance. What I'm saying is that. When when a leader does something good, we're supposed to say that's good. You need to do more of that. When they do something that's bad, you say that's stupid. That's not what we want. Don't do any more of that. But instead, we're just that's my leader. I will support everything he says and everything he does, no matter how stupid, you know, and the other side does that. And so it becomes this battle of take this rich prick out so I can put my rich prick in. And everyone's focused on who's prick, the selective prick that goes in. And the real problem is the prickery. Huh. Like we, we need to get rid of the prickery. And then we can then and then the then rich pricks who get in, they can't do any damage. But so they want to yank Trump out to put somebody else in. And that's and so I so anyway, so what I wanted to kind of do is kind of do a, a, a kind of like a week wrap up. I enjoy talking to you on the weekend, man. You make me feel good about myself. You make me feel yeah, good about the. Uh, no, you make me feel good about the whole scope of things, brother. Because you come with <laughs> different stuff every day. You know what I mean? Me, yeah. I'm like gung ho. You know what I mean? I'm the gung ho guy. You know, I just throw everything at you. you just, yeah. I throw it from here to there, everywhere. Because you got to understand, this is about thinking. People don't realize that what we're caught up in is about thinking. It's not about all the things that we see happening, more or less, as much as it is about thinking. We don't understand that we have a capability to think in a different way. We have a capability to interact with each other in a different way. But first, we have to perceive things from a different, 
way, I should think, say. Or our thought, our thought patterns have to come from a different perception, I should say. You know what I mean? Because it's like, I guess what I'm, I'm going to break it down like this. When we all look up in the sky, we all see what? I, right now, I see clouds that look like they're supposed to be there. I don't see any lines right now. I don't see any. Right now, right now, right now. But we all see what? The same thing. You see the same thing as I see when I look up, and that's just what it is. We see the same thing when we look up. Now, when we take our eyes away from that commonality, right? You know what I mean? That's the very common thing that we have, that we share together. You know, when we look up, we see the same thing. When we gaze upon nature, we see the same thing. So we we get the same information from the things of the natural perception that we have around our lives. But when we, uh, this is the peripheral, right? The peripheral and the narrow-minded vision. So the narrow, our narrow-minded thinking is just straight ahead, right? So Americanized indoctrination or the way we think in America is narrow-minded to American likeness. American uh, issues that we have been created to care about, uh, American people who we have been created to just care about more or less more than others, and just American na- nature of status quo and standardized thinking that happens in this country is narrow-minded. Yeah. When that happens, people don't even understand what's around their periphery. You know what I'm saying? So when you look upon nature, it's like you can look at something and you're looking at a tree, right? You can look and zero in on that tree and you zoom in and that's what you're thinking about is that tree because you're looking right at that tree. But can you understand what is going on all around you that you still see with your peripheral? Now, this is confusing when I break it down because it makes no sense the way I try to relay it because when I, you know, thought about it or when I understood it, it made perfect sense. But what it is is we have to try to understand the things that are going on around us as well as that which we're, try- we're told to zoom in on, which is in America. Like, we're really convinced from birth that we have to zoom in on things in America. We have to zoom in on American thinking. Our only education should be American education. If you don't believe and trust in American education, you're an idiot. So basically it's like when we, when we have our minds zeroed in on thoughts or our thought pattern is zeroed in or our perception focuses like that, we don't understand the things that are going on in the periphery that is still there ever present around us. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like our own selfish situations are more of concern than everything else that is also going on around us that has an effect on how we live our lives. You know what I'm saying? It's confusing, but it's like it's a deeper no, way of thinking about it. No, it's deep. It's deep. And so what I see when you said that, I see a horse with blinders on, mm-hmm. right? Like, why do you put the blinders on the horse? Because you don't, you want to block its peripheral vision. You want it to see only what's in front of it. You want it to eat the carrot. Meanwhile, right. the horse, is food over there, it's food over there, it can walk over there and go over there, it can run, it can do all these things. It can be free. But if you got your peripheral blocking what are those things called? Somebody tell me what those things are called in the room. But when you got these things on, the horse, you can make it do everything you want it to do. And that horse, for the most part, that's its life. It thinks it's free. It thinks it's black. It thinks it's white. It thinks it's Asian, right? It thinks it's Mexican. It thinks it's American. It thinks it's Christian. And so you can keep its focus straight ahead where you want it to walk and what you want it to do. And this is this when you said that, this is what I see. I see, you know, the community and a, a earth friendly community, one that is truly equal where we're, you know, because people like to talk about equality because it's a nice yeah. word to say. They don't, don't really believe in it. Right. They don't believe in it. They want to they, right. they, they want to tell you what to do. I, listen, I'm going to tell you, I'm the first one who I grew up. In an all black community on the mm-hmm. outside of Washington, D.C., Chocolate City, right. black people everywhere, right. everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Right. right. So many that they fought amongst themselves. We had more problems with the light skin and the wealthy blacks than anybody else. So I, the whole black elite is a whole nother discussion. I could spend a long time on the things they did to yeah, us. But, but the point is, is that, you know, we grew up uh, 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 
in those communities and we didn't have that peripheral vision. We didn't know what was out. Like I had friends of all races, but there were very few, there, you know, yeah. he one, two, three, here four and here and there. And, you know, but you couldn't really get involved in their cultures. You couldn't get to know who they were. You know, my Chinese friend, we'd go to Chinatown, you know, we'd hang out with his mom, eat a little bit, you know, my white friends, we hang out with them. And for as mo for the most part, as a kid, I didn't really know race was there until I started getting to like middle school and high school when the kids started getting a bit rougher and mm -hmm. all of these kids who were my friend, I was always the, um, the rhetoric too. Yeah, I, you know what? I, 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 I always liked the underdog. I was always a friend of the underdog, I was a little right. skinny kid, whatever is my friend, somebody pushed into a corner. You know, yeah. I had the big Christian father. So he was always, you know, you always go to go yeah. find somebody right. in a corner. Nobody's talking to talk right. to him, you know? And so I would always do that, but it, it, you know, it made a lot of fringe people who didn't fit in with the mass, my friends. And it's the first time I got exposed to the fact that your oppressor, the oppressed, when in power, will become the oppressor. Always. It has nothing to do with ethnicity, race, uh, religion. The, 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 the oppressed will turn around if they are in power and they will oppress you. And so when you said, so I saw a lot of black kids being real tough mm -hmm. on 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 the other kids yeah, yeah. um and, and so i ended up getting in a bunch of fights but that's a whole nother that i'd stand up for my friends but the yeah, thing no, is, is that, you, know, you know you want equality so what you said is so deep i mean what we need is we need a peripheral vision community that's yeah. willing to take off the blinders and say you know what no i'm not what you say i am i'm not black i'm not right. Asian. I'm not American. I'm not, right. you know, Britain. I am a person and I want to live free and I want to be equal to everybody else on the planet. And I don't want to tell anybody else what to do. Right. And that's the thing. See, this is, the, this is where it gets messed up at. So this is where everybody gets confused and it's like, oh, we can't do that. Or blah, 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 blah. It's because of what the history has shown. You know, the history has shown us that black and white and Asian, Mexican, or whatever you have has been used against them. You know, they have used these things against us as tools to divide us from each other and also tools to control us in our mind. Because when we carry on that message, we carry on the either power or the lack thereof, as well as either the hate, you know what I mean? The hate and the destruction of those times, you know? But we have to carry the understanding. What we're not doing is carrying the understanding, but we're carrying the hate, the division, the destruction of a failed mentality or the failed psychological, I would say, preparedness. You know, because they don't prepare us psychologically to understand these things in a way that we can say, I'm not American. I'm not even really black, but I'm black in the sense of the struggle that I have to live through being a black man in the sense of what they use the word as. You know what I mean? And it gets confusing because it's like when I broke it down for myself, I'm looking at it like, man, I can't just say I'm not black because I'm black. But at the same time, I'm not black because I'm just a human being. But to understand that I'm just a human being is not something that we understand because it doesn't really make sense in the terms of, oh, there's race there's nationality, there's religion, and there's all these other things that I have to actually associate with to be a being in this modern civilization. So now it takes away everything that I really am because I have to, in the sense of what society says, associate myself with something, or I'm a non-believer, I'm a conspiracy theorist, or the like thereof, because I want to question what I truly am, or I want to understand what my truly uh cause to exist in this time it's you know what i mean and it's weird because it's like your, your thinking can't wrap yourself around that because like i said earlier you're so fo we're so focused on that narrow-mindedness and thought and our perceptions are so narrow narrowly uh created i guess or i don't know I, i'm not just, my words is not in the way that they're articulate that i can like you know form no they, 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 they are uh, people understand. you didn't but it's, they, they, it's, they, it's deep, they, it's deep. You know it's what I mean? It's deep. deep. It, 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 it's, there's a lot to it. And so where I was going with that, you 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 have my mind going a couple different places. 
So uh, I went I went to breakfast this morning, right? And I went to a little diner. Mm-hmm. And when I got there, I was, there was a whole bunch of police cars out front. And I was not in my town, Chris. Let me tell you this. I know the police in my town. They're good guys. Yeah. There's a good there's a good gal. There's not a lot of them. There's only a few of them. I didn't know the police in this town. And so All I right. went, went inside, and you know, they whole gang of them. A whole gang. They're about 15 of them all sitting down. I was like, oh Lord. And so, so this is what I was thinking when you said this preparedness, right? Like the reality is we got to shed these labels. But the fact is we have to live in the present day, right? And so we can't, we can't pretend that history does not exist. And some people get lost when we talk about this and they think, oh, well, you just, you just can't delete it and say it doesn't exist. No, it exists. And there, there are very real conditions in every country we live in and you still got to operate within that, right? I understand this. And, 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 you know, if y'all know me, y'all know that I'm not going to come down on the police, but I'm, I'm going to say it from a real perspective, which is the police have been highly trained to fight with poor people. So whoever the poor people are in the area you are, you're probably not going to want to mouth off around them. You're probably going to want to show them that you're a really good person. Otherwise, that automation will kick in, right? It's like they talk about the um, what is it, the subconscious mind. 98% of your day, 98% of the time, your subconscious mind is making all these decisions, right? It's going through and it's doing everything for you. It's, it's making your cereal. It's getting the cab. It's getting the milk out the cabinet. It's pouring it in the cereal. You know, it's eating in your mouth. Like when you're eating and you're watching TV, you're not thinking about eating. Your 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 hand is automatically it's in automation, and so your 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 right. subconscious is trained to do certain things. Like television trains you, which is why they call it programming. By mm-hmm. the same token, we train the military. We need to send them to war. All we right. don't want them to question things. We just want them to react. And by the same token, police. In neighborhoods of whoever they're arresting the most, mm-hmm. they are trained and they have 98% subconscious mind right. to do the that's things that's it. there. And so we have to, to me, it's about evolution, right? Like we, we, we have to, we have to actually understand where we came from, utilize what we know about where we came from to make sure we get to the place we're preparing for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So we shed you know, we shed these labels, but but there are steps to do that. And so, that, so when you said that, that's what I'm thinking about. You know, it's preparedness. We got to prepare for the next world, but we got to start taking those steps. And so, you know, I usually when I see officers, I talk to them. I try to, you know, I, I show them I'm a nice guy. I'm an old guy. I know that they're running around with these arresting these young kids in the street. I, yeah. you know, and I, and I want to do the best I can to help reprogram them. I'm I've, I've got a lot of friends in their 30s, 40s, 50s that are right. straight fools. You know, they get attitudes with the police. They they make it worse. Like, they yeah, know yeah, better. Definitely, definitely, you know, definitely. They know better, but they make it worse because they let that anger come out from what they see on social media all day with, yeah. you know, police officers beating up black kids. And they don't stop and ask themselves the question, why do they always show black kids when we know it's more white kids? It's because they're training you to be violent. You're an adult. You you should know that you should be reverse engineering that training. So now when the police officer comes across that kid who's in that poor neighborhood, he may stop and think his training may only work nine with 98. That 98 percent may only have 100 percent reaction. And there's a little thought there that, no, there are a lot of good people who look like this kid and this kid could be that person's son or daughter or whatever. You know, like it's easy to 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 say, you know, labels don't exist, Mm -hmm. but we got to live in the present moment. So that's what I kind of got from you right there. You, you are extremely articulate and I completely get where you're coming from. And that's why I like to talk about this stuff because it's the only way we really start to make those steps. Right. And and, and the other thing is I say with that is, (laughs) <laughs> oh man, I got into it with the privileged conversations last night. I was on late with Harsh. Oh man, bad thing. Yeah, that was drinking, I heard. That was yeah, drinking. man. <laughs> we had some oh harsh, man. Listen, 
I would never go to a bar with that brother. That brother was throwing him down. He yeah, was down. He, 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 he's, he's, you know, no, you can't go no River Hearts. That's a drinking no, dog. Oh, he he was throwing him down. So I I was being patient. I was I was sipping, man. He was just like oh, 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 oh. by the end of the conversation, man. Oh boy, he was okay. Oh, I had to tell him don't take the phone in the bathroom. But anyway, I don't go down there. I'm an old guy. I got to get up in the morning. So, you know, right. uh, I got to utilize a little bit of my wisdom, um, you know, but we have to prepare for it. So so the other thing I was going to say is that uh, so we got we hit white privilege and black privilege and all that stuff. Like I said, I don't really like that conversation because privilege is real. Everybody knows it's real. It's yeah. not just race. It's where you live, the type of car you drive, who your parents are, where you went right. to college. How much money you had. Right. If all you that. went to prison, right? prison. You did, Different there's all prison. kind of privileges. Right. In all the streets, you, you can have privilege being an OG. You know, you went to jail. Yeah. You it's got real privileges talk. on the block. The so there's the hood right. got privileges, babe. You got privileges in the hood. You know what I mean? If you just got out after doing that 10 year bid, you know what I mean? You come up, you got respect, man. They know nothing. You don't, don't mess with that boy, man. That boy got time, man. You best not play with his gangster, like you know what I mean? It's yes. crazy, folks. You got, but that's the thing. We have to understand it, but we have to utilize that understanding in the way that we can get away from those privileges. That equality is. You, what's that? That was the long one. I can't even see your face no more. <laughs> Oh, that's, man. Right. that's okay, that's man. Right. I don't, you don't right. need to see my face. But, uh, I, yeah. I had to jump back to another one. That was kind of deep. It was, it was going in the, the right police, direction. No, no, the police thing you were talking about, it was crucial also because that's another thing that we have to get more understanding about. Everybody understands that the police are trained in an aggressive manner. And that yes. is also to do with the statistical way in which they incarcerate individuals. And that also, like you said, it has to do with the areas that they target, which is the lower income areas, more than as opposed to the urban areas where you see fewer. Like, think about it. The, so the, you you from um, Philly County area, or at least farther outside of Philly area, right? Yeah, so I'm, I'm in the so I, I grew up on the outskirts of Washington, D.C. So you grew up outside the city. So you grew up in the inner city. You know there's a heavy police presence, right? Oh yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Now when you get out to the suburbs, it's not really that much of a heavy police presence, but no. the population isn't that much as the city, but the land, the land uh what, it's I, close. what I'm trying to say is that they make us think, you know what I mean, that this needs to be such a police presence in these communities. They make us think. Yep. With the way that they show us the statistics, with the way that they show us the crime on the news and media, in the way that puts fear, I guess it's fear that they're trying to get in people's minds to where they say, oh, I, I have to be afraid to step outside in this neighborhood or that neighborhood. I have to be afraid of this person or that, these group of people. And what it's doing is blocking the understanding that we have to have for each other to realize why these people may be acting the way in which they act. Why this area may have an understanding in which they dislike people from other areas in the way they dislike those. Like, you know, the inner cities, they don't like the suburban people because they act in the way that they exude their privilege in the way they look down on people from lower income communities. And we know this because we see it every day. We know this because we see it on Hollywood. We see how Hollywood does it. They look down on us as if right. they are beyond us as human beings. Well, we know oh, yeah. this is not true. This is, couldn't be farther from the truth. But we let this play into the, I guess, the speak of our minds because we accept it. We look, oh, they're famous. I'm, they, I idolize them because they made it to Hollywood and they're successful and they make millions of dollars. So I'm supposed to idolize them. We not we're, we don't idolize everyday people that are fighting to to struggling in the the lower levels of the systematic oppression that we face. We don't idolize these people because we are told to look down on these people when this is the core of what the system has been doing to people since its inception with the psychological understanding that it has, but also the structurization 
of how they form policy, how they form government, and the like thereof. People don't even want to learn to understand and grasp this. When they process how we are talking about coming to solutions, how we're talking about forming unity. We can't form unity if people can't even form a proper understanding. I mean, it's like, this is what I'm trying to understand. This is what I'm trying to break down in my train of thought right now at this current time. Yeah, well, that, it's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to do. I mean, the people who are sympathetic to equality are the people who have less are less equal, right? And so, the less equal you are, the more you are oppressed. The more you're you're wanting to step up to be equal or or things to get better. And so, mm -hmm. the people on the lower ends, and that's all over the the world, right? Wherever you are, you want equality. But the people who are like on the upper echelons of equality, you know, the middle class and up, they're not so interested in, in, in you know, being fair play. And I, let's call it fair play. They're not interested in fair play because they're, they're a little higher up on that plantation. They're a little, they're doing a bit better. Like, I like to think of it like from a colonizing mindset. A lot of people call it American. I, I like to think from a colonizing mm -hmm. because... They took that feudal system where you had mm -hmm. the king and the mm -hmm. queen and the royal family, and then you had the lords, and they had their minions and the Praetorian right. guards, and then the people and the serfs and the peasants. And there was all there were all these different layers. And the higher up you were, the more equal, over equal you were. And let's yeah. and so that's what I, I see. I yeah. see people, people who are more interested in getting a better life for them mm -hmm. or for their kids. They're interested in common ground. They don't yeah. want to be on either extreme side. Speaking of extremity, I wanted to hit the it would get your thoughts on the whole Kanye thing. I don't know if you <laughs> if you heard about this silliness, but you know, you've got, you know, one deep extreme side over here, and you got one deep extreme ignorant side over there, and they don't want anything to change. You know, they want to keep things going because their life is relatively well, but it's destroying, you know, the less equal people all over the planet that's what i was going to say this is this is kind of where we're stuck at also right now before we touch on that kind of thing or whatever we're stuck because people have earned their way in this system. like people have really earned their keep i guess you could say like people have worked to get where they're at and people have struggled through the systematic oppressions of credit loans this and that student debt and this and that to get where they're at today and I understand that in people that have done that, they're looking back at the others and like, well, I know that this is possible because that's why I've lived through it and I've worked through it and I've done it myself. And I kind of understand what they're thinking is to want people to, I guess, go along the same path or, you know, struggle the same long suffering or whatever you have. But I get where like the middle class comes from when they say that you know or when they act as if they don't care more or less so much about the lower level struggle because they've earned their way from that lower level struggle to get to the middle class you know privilege that they have gotten to today and you know they've seen how their parents struggled or whatever the case is so they have a different perspective on you know the whole situation that's going on right now you know so it's like they haven't taken their mind out of that because that's all they've known they've known that look my family suffered and i made it to where i'm at because i did it the government did it the american way or whatever the case is and i know it works because i did it and that's all i know so they don't want to take their eyes out of that narrow-minded vision as well you know because why would that you know i, I get it but they should they should they should be able to be open-minded to see that everybody is not supposed to maybe live that same path and whatever. But the Kanye thing, that's crazy, man. I don't, I, don't, I don't get. It. I really, I've, I've really gotten information from the Kanye thing from other people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's like okay. when, when they, when people told me the first thing Kanye was like, I guess he was on the Twitter rant and this and that, and I'm like, okay, cool. But I mean, I don't have any expectations in this life really no more. You know. I don't really have any expectations from people anymore because I learned when you place expectations on people, you get let down. When you ex when you place expectations on things, you set yourself up for uh, becoming upset. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You leave yourself up to be getting upset. Like, no, I don't do that. Especially with people, you can't do that. 
Don't expect people to be super great. Don't expect people to be superstars. Don't expect people to be uh, unoffensive. Like, come on, this is 2018. We've been dragged and drained through the process of hate, savagery, heinous crime, um, ignorance, indoctrination, all these different things. And people still expect others to be some type of wholesome individuals. Like, I don't get it. You know what I mean? I'm starting to realize that you have to process these things in your mind to where you understand that these people have issues just like any other person has issues. It doesn't matter how much money you got. It doesn't matter what kind of car you drive. It doesn't matter what kind of education you got. I don't care if you a scholar from this school or that school. People have issues. All people. Yeah. The same issues. We all got the same issues because we suffer from the same bullshit mentalities and thinking and the Americanization of thought. But people don't really want to understand that Americanization of thought is hate. It's division. Yeah. It's sick and demented at its core. And yeah. when you understand how sick and demented at its core it is, you really understand how sick and demented as people we are. You know, and it's like, I get it, but it's still like life is beautiful still. You know, life is beautiful. Every day, we have the ability to find more of ourselves. You know, I've realized that every day, I don't need to be trying to find more of this man-made reality that surrounded my every day life or whatever. I have an ability to find myself within that reality. You know, and that's what people don't understand. People are not trying to find themselves. People are trying to find their place in that reality that's not really meant for them. You know what I'm saying? And it's, con it's confusing when I try to relay it because it's like, we, you, you, you deserve that. You deserve all that hate and that negative shit that you feel and all those bad feelings and that way that you express your anger about this event or that people. You deserve that because you're letting that become your reality. So Kanye West shit, the Kanye West, I don't give a damn about the Kanye West shit, honestly. But it's, <laughs> it's, but it's hilarious to me how much people actually give a damn about the Kanye West shit. And it's like, yo, yeah, yeah. the old Kanye West is black this and that. And it's like, I don't give a damn about none of this. That Kanye West is with Donald Trump. Who the hell cares? Right. You, ex right. Like, you expected right. you expected anything less. I mean, we're in 2018, baby. And I don't, I'm expecting I'm expecting big shit to happen. Really. Like, yeah. I'm like, people are foolish. <laughs> like, people are serious. I mean, look, we're not serious right yeah, you know, and, and that's that's why it was interesting to me. It's it I don't I actually I don't follow entertainers and I don't follow singers and I barely even know who Kanye West is. And you know, I so I, I kind of did some homework. What's interesting to me is I try to figure out why other adults are interested. Like that's why it's interesting to me because I think when you talk to people, it's easier to talk to them if you understand why you at 50 years old are following Kanye West. It's, and I don't know how old he is. He's a young guy. But more importantly, why at 50 years old, you're paying attention to people you know are actors, right? We know that entertainment is all entertainment. We right. know that the entertainment industry in Hollywood, they're just an arm of the military industrial complex. They're just an arm of this colonized world. They're the Coliseum. They get people excited. They tell you what to believe and think, and they throw bread at you, and they want mm -hmm. you to be okay with the people who are starving in the streets, right? right. So why as, as an hint, adult? Hint, you'll spend $200 on a ticket to go see a, a show instead of giving $200 <laughs> to a homeless person because guess what? You'll find every excuse not to give $200 to somebody homeless, but to... <laughs> A three yeah. hour entertainment show is $200. Yeah. But $200 could go like two weeks worth of shit for a homeless you, person. Two weeks like, worth no, of a month. That's a month. Two months. Two hundred dollars, bro. And it's like, I get it though. I get it because I realize how trapped people are in their mind. But mm. it's like, come on. How can you be mad at others for trying to speak this truth to life? And it's like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't get that one. Yeah. That. And, that, and that's, but that's, that's why it's interesting to me. Cause I want to know why do we still, cause it, to me, it, it directly applies to the leaders, right? We know they're actors as well. We know they're doing a job 
And how do we, you know, and for people who are like thinking that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of pushing the logic, think about you at work and you at home. Are you the same exact person? No, you're not. You're not the same person. We know that you can pretend and lie and tell us anything you want. When the boss is around, are you the same person when the boss isn't around? No, you're not. You might do some of the same things. Your demeanor might change. The words you use might change, but you change. So we yeah. know for money, people change. And even on representatives, that's what I call that. Right. Your representatives. Representatives. right. You, you got percentages of the representative you want to show at that mm-hmm. time because your money's related. And that's all I, I saw that I guess it was Kanye and, and John Legend. All this was about is they have listeners. Their listeners are indoctrinated. The listeners need to hear certain things. Kanye's going for one audience. So he's saying and supporting one thing. John Legend's going for the other audience, so he's saying the other thing. Meanwhile, I can guarantee you. I don't even know what John Legend's saying. What did he say? Well, okay, well, well, that's that. Apparently, I'm sorry. I, there was a beginning, so that's that's how the whole thing that I, unless I'm wrong, this is how it started out. Was uh, so Kanye is a Trump supporter. He he didn't vote, but he said that uh, he now supports Trump. Wears his hat, you know, make America great again. So uh, John Legend came at Trump, Kanye next, huh? Yeah, well, well, John Legend and Kanye are friends. They're friends, oh, right? Okay. And and let me and let me be fair. Is for anybody who does follow, I'm not saying don't follow them. You shouldn't listen to. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm, I'm I don't. But I respect John Legend for his music. I know I heard a song or two. That's all I've ever heard. The boy yeah, he can got sing. Songs. He got and he's got songs. pipes. I respect him for his yeah. pipes. I I can only sing in the tub. I can only sing in the shower. Short of that, ain't going. It ain't, it ain't happening. Um, and I imagine Kanye West can sing too or rap. Right. He does something right. good, right. and so I respect them for that. They are very successful. The artistry. Respect the artistry. You did. I respect the respect artistry. Right. But when it comes down to political decisions in a world where there are people starving that they have very little relationship with, they don't live in the communities of, and the the laws, the legislation that they probably never even read. Mm-hmm. I'm not interested in what they their acting tells them they should support, because even if they read the laws, their acting, their entertainment would require them to say whatever was popular. Right. So, um, so, but that, but that, I mean, that's my interest in it is, is to try to figure out why do people care? I appreciate the fact that Kanye is an independent enough thinker that he can stand out on his own against mm-hmm. the majority of what are these indoctrinated communities are. But right. anyway, so how it started out was John Legend sent him okay. a text and said, you need to stop supporting Trump. What you're doing oh, is damaging. Wow. It's hurtful. Oh, wow. It's racist. Wow. You know, you know, uh, hey, hey, that's what it is. That's what you know, something to affect your. You're doing it for money. You know, we know we this. And he done. said it in a nice we way. Are done. Look, we yeah. are done. He he said it in a nice way, but he was just like, he's racist and yeah. he's hurting a lot of people, his policies, yeah. his priorities. And I was sitting here, you know, of course, you, you know, you and I think along the same lines. And we're sitting here thinking, like, no, because the Democrats do the same thing. They yeah. just say it in a sexier too. way. They do, they have the same policies, they have the same, right. if you want to call it institutionalized they racism. Rub they rub your back while you're doing it. They rub your back. Right. See, they're right they're in the middle. Like your daddy, they're gonna smack you inside the back of your head. They're gonna say, "Man, shut." You know this, right, man? This is right. This is what's gotta happen. This, you know this, got We can't let you do that. Stop doing that. The Democrats are like this. It's okay, honey. We're gonna do. This. We gotta do this. This is what you need. This, well, honey, it's gonna be. We're gonna get you what you need, baby. Don't worry about it. Line that couple hundred years. This is what they're, they're, it's, it's, it's conniving, okay? They, yeah. Oh, it is. They it's deceitful. Master this very well. And they use the events that happen in this illu- this illusory reality. So I think reality is really an illusion now because it's like all these things are happening, different distractions and diversions from people just understanding their self. But all these things they use now as politics. So any event that happens, anything that happens, it's politics, and you you, you spank your you spank your kids. It's politics. You know what I mean? You put plant you put plants in your garden. It's politics. It's confusing. Man. Everything that we do in life has been overrun with politics. But people don't really understand that our freedom has been overtaken by Completely. politics. Yes, you know what I mean? our freedom has overtaken our freedom to look our our ability to think freely. Guess what? It's been overrun by politics. 
You right, can't, like this. You can't, the, the politics is so much. Oh, no, it's political. This is, everybody thinks everything's political when it's not. Most of the right. things we are dealing with, most of the, our understanding and our lack, okay, lack of uniting as people or lack of coming together is about our ability to be social with each other. Yeah. Outside of the indoctrinated thinking and yeah. outside of the indoctrinated education that we have been given. Because when you when you say that, okay, I can be Christian, right? I'm Christian. I'm not Christian. I'm nothing. I give it all away. But it's like this. I can be a Christian and I can say, look, maybe this isn't all completely right. So I have to be open to looking and understanding others' views as well. Because maybe I understand that they might not have it right either because we've all been divided from mm-hmm. that which is just the core of truth. Because you can't tell me that people honestly believe that they have to, have to be a Catholic, Christian, Muslim, religion, or Islam. Sorry, I said Muslim. I'm so sorry. I don't want to be disrespectful, but Islam. Um, and even Islam is broken down to like, you know, different denominations or whatever places. Catholic, Catholic, Catholic system is broken down to different non- denominations. Christianity is broken down into different denominations. And you can't tell me that people are already convinced that this is really the way it is. It's really supposed to be divided to the core of our understanding of our existence, even. You know, we can't, so it's like they tell you that there is a separation from church and state, you know? And that's kind of funny because there's really not a separation from church and state because the state was created by the church thing. You know, people don't want to understand that it's state. The state as we know it in this United States was created by the church of overseas in Britain, but with Rome, if you know, in, in the likes of those countries overseas, they practice religious things but not from the concept of what we see from religion as today. And they turned it into where it was turned into the state because they had influence over all issues in life. So now people haven't even understood how to go to the core and root of how we are governed. You know, people just let American reality or American indoctrination teach them exactly what is going on in this time. And it is confusing using them because they don't understand that this is all I mean uh, it's like I would say game because when you say game it's like you you, you kind of dilute with it because it's deeper than a game you know it's like something that's truly masterful that has created this civilization to be what it is today you know and people don't even we can't even take our minds outside of the American understanding to grasp that this is much deeper than what we think it is, and this is much deeper than politics even. This is not even about politics at the end of the day, because politics is what we see as another, as in my eyes, is another division of the entertainment sector, you know, because they're entertaining us with these lies and these policies when it's a deeper group or it's a deeper group of who's really controlling the reins, you know, and the distraction is to keep us we are informed. Believe it or not, we were the original leaders, I guess you could say, getting educated towards what's going on around the process of how they do the American in the English way. You know, the English way didn't overrun the globe until like the last couple of decades in the way it has, but we had an understanding of the English and American process before the globe did. But we not we're not using we're not using it because we're indoctrinated not to even inform ourselves and understand deeper form, you know, because it's masterful in psychology and controlling people and controlling how people think and it uses every facet of our life to dictate yeah. uh, how we come back. Uh, it's, 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 oh, it's too deep. It's too deep. Really, right? No, it, it's, I, good. I don't write down too, it's too deep. Yeah, no, it's good and, and I like where you're taking. That's kind of where I wanted to go because I did want to jump into the, the religious stuff. Right? I don't spend a whole lot of time on entertainment. I I like to understand why, but I think it's the same issues we have, we, you know, we have with the politicians and leaders, but Mm -hmm. you know, from a religious perspective, brother, I have to tell you, so I am, I am, I'm a Christian in that I was raised that way. Me too. What what I believe today 
I don't think it fits with probably any Christians that I know. This is what I was kind of thinking about. I mean, if I'm off, off base, but something that we don't understand was talking to people a long time ago, whether it's communities of microbiology and bacteria and fungi and mother nature, spirits, gods, aliens, multidimensional quantum physics creatures, we're talking to people and people were writing it down saying, this is what the voices tell me to do. And I kind of view that now, I think, as people were hearing the voices between this timeline, this date and this date. Mm -hmm. And they stopped and said, you know what? This is Christianity. We're not going to listen to the voices no more. We're not going to listen to our gut. We're not going to, you know, this is a religion. We're not going to listen anymore. Let's write it in a book. And that's it. Yeah. yeah. Let's cap that. Let's cap that right there. Let's cap it right there. Yeah. You know, and here's another timeline. Let's call this Islam. Let's call this Muslim. Mm-hmm. Let's call this Jew. And so mm-hmm. what it did is whatever these things that are talking to everybody is, whatever, if it's we're all connected, I don't know what it is. But the only way you could control that message is if you capped it. Mm-hmm. And now man can own that religion because now you don't Mm -hmm. listen to your gut you don't listen to nature you don't listen to you know what the universe is telling you because that's crazy now right you know and so i kind of view it as like you have this you know and tell me if if i'm off base but this is how i'm kind of thinking about it because the the older i get the more and more every day i lean more towards this whole world word spirituality like i think you've got this spirituality thing we don't understand it People want to convince you they understand it and they want to cap what it can and can't tell you because they want to control you. And I'm I'm a little more open minded where I'm just like, you know, you have this greater spirituality thing that we just don't understand. And if you feel your life is led to take you this way, then you should go that way. Do this. Do that. Don't worry about what the church tells you. Like my 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 links to Christianity, it probably stops at kind of the Ten Commandments which is basically leave everybody alone, love everybody. They need to shirt off your back, give it to them, feed them. Don't kill anybody. Don't hurt anybody. The basics and everything after that to me is kind of fudgy. You -hmm. know, I don't think that they really understood what was being said to them or whatever. And to me, that's kind of like my rules for life. So when I say I'm Christian, it is from that perspective. And the rest is I don't care what the spirit things are. They tell me something different. I'm going to do something different. But when somebody comes along and says, hey, let's get on a boat, let's get some cannons and some guns, let's go murder people and make them Christian, the ones we don't murder, rape a whole bunch of them, and we're going to save them, steal their resources, I know that you, you you know, but that's what I think. That's how I kind of see religions as now. I get it now. I get it. Is that that crazy, man? Tell me. I get it, though. I know. I get it completely because it's like, I come from the understanding of Christian background too. And it's like the whole, see, that's the thing, the whole, the whole Bible, uh, understanding and everything. It's like, maybe it could have been, like you said, capped at a certain era, you know, you couldn't have more understanding on top of, I guess, that Christianity understanding, but it could be true. But the thing I realized is also that the people in control contaminated mostly all the information from those times. You know, so the, the real information or the true understanding of what that was about, we may not never know. Or we may be able to know if we look deeper, we collectively came to un- try to, you know, ask the right questions. We could find out exactly what was meant. As far as like the whole spirituality thing, I'm starting to question even that. You know, because mm. we have to question everything. Now, as far as yes. spirituality, I feel as though it's a connection there, but to really understand that i have to go to find out what the word really means you know go to what the root of the word use this is everything is about going to the root i see now you know i have to go to the root of which they made spirituality to be what it is right now in our american understanding or our language i guess you could say and then i can break it down to figure out why they needed it to be that and what it meant for it to be that you know and then i could form a better understanding about maybe the religion or the but whatever but i realized that everything that we have to
to grasp, has to go back to the root. I mean, it's funny because, like, you know, you said that the Christianity period was in a certain time. Now, would it be right for me to ignore what happened in previous times? You know, right. Before there was Christianity, there was something previously. Was. And before there was something previously, guess what? There was something before that. There was something before that as well. But guess what? We don't know. We have you know no idea. why we don't know? It's because those in power, okay? Those in power at different, because look, at, before Christianity, there was surely enough something else. But mm-hmm. the same way that they uh, shifted and made the Christian, Christian story to be what it was, they did that with the previous things that they, they, we call see, religion. We call it religion. It could have been something else. You know what I mean? It could have been something completely different without, I guess, form of name, but form of something different than what it is the name of religion. Because from my understanding, they didn't have words back when they were practicing these uh, things or whatever the case is, these uh, religious sacrifices and, you know, events or whatever. Yeah. But we have to go to the root of even that. But we can't because we've been blocked from the information. They put a cap on the history of how we can grow or evolve with these current religions or whatever the case is, but they've also put a barrier to the history of before. You know what I mean? So people, I try to understand like this, 2,000 years ago, okay, they said Christ was born. So then why did they start the the years from 2000? Like who did that benefit if they start the years from zero then? You know what I mean? Then I started to understand like, okay, this benefits time that is structured by a certain group of people. You know, Time, as far as humanity and nature goes, not, it wasn't no zero BC or zero to the, But then, when you factor in religion, people think, "Oh, yes, it was. This is this is because God said this was the beginning, or Jesus Christ was the symbol of the beginning of time." So, no, that's not what it really was. <laughs> Go back and understand it from what the Romans and those people that were in power at that time wanted yeah. time to be structured at. You understand what I'm saying? And yeah. And then you could break down another layer. It's like it's all about taking shedding off layers. We have to shed, shed off the shed layers, the layers of, of nationalism. Of we, yep. we have to shed off the later layers of the fundamental understanding that oh, scholars know everything. They did all the research, so they know it all. We don't have to do the research because they did it. No, that is so. That is basically making yourself appear to be dumb. Because you're saying that you can't research the same way they've researched to find out the same information that they find out. You're telling that you don't have the ability to understand what they had the ability to understand. And yeah. we all have the ability to understand things almost equally, I would say. Almost equally. Okay? Yeah. But it's all about how we open our minds up to be able to process the stuff that is out there, the stuff that we don't know, and the stuff yeah. that we've it's about processing. So we've been so accustomed to processing American everything, American knowledge, American way of life, American understanding of history, American understanding of how it's governed, because people can't get out of the being governed by a government because they have only American understanding. So they think right. that, oh, everything about life was American history. So like I said, we don't know the previous, previous history because it's been blocked. So people just think that, oh, everything was always governed. And, no. They don't even teach you about how the natives live to the core. You know, you don't, we don't have the understanding of what the natives live like. You have to go to the natives and understand from them. People haven't done that. People haven't done that to understand how they really live. People have taken America's word for it. Think about how messed up that is, Gerard. People have taken America's word for almost everything in the way we process the things around our lives. So when it comes to black and white, Whose word did they pick for that? Whose word? Oh, exactly. Did they, whose what word is, did they pick? Who, who invented? Who, who, who invented, invented that, who that word? That? I, as I recall, <laughs> we was colored at a certain yeah. time in American. See, this is the trick. This is yeah. about tricks and games. Yeah. When we well, came you, over here, it wasn't no black and white. Probably, no. Was, was there black and white women? They didn't call black people black people when they came. No. We was Negro or colored. So yeah. where did black and white factor in? White people wasn't white. No, it wasn't white. They were all it different all, types. Of white people. Yep. It wasn't. So 
So where did black and white factor into confusing people, but also benefiting those in power? You got to understand. You got to go to the root of some of these things. You know what? And you know that's what I do. Go to root. Well, well, let me jump. I'm gonna jump in there. So, so you hit on you hit on a couple things. Um, so you know you're talking about being open minded. I'm I'm just trying to process. You know, open minded like that's everything. Because when you're open minded, to me, the root of that is basically saying that you're willing to let everything be wrong that you know. And and I think there's an evolution process that we're all going through and our brains go through. Mm -hmm. And you get to a place where you're willing to accept that everything I know could be wrong. And if you're willing to do that, then you are truly open minded. But if you're not willing to accept that everything from my religion, my race, everything I was taught in my community, my nation, you know, when I hear something else that is more plausible or is factual than what I knew was wrong. And so we live in a society where a lot of people are OK with being wrong because they're the constructs of this matrix that all this indoctrination has around them is more important to them than what is true. And so I think when you say that, you know, the, the, the power in that statement is, you know, you can't get anywhere with somebody who is okay with being wrong. And if you're indoctrinated into um, a religion that can't be changed, then you're okay. You trust the people who wrote the book and modified the book and edited the book to where it is today. And you're saying this man is God because this man will never be wrong ever. And so I don't think you can really do anything with people like that. I think your brain, like I'm not trying to change anyone, right? Like I don't think you can change anyone in whether or not their brain has the ability to accept that the constructs of this matrix, matrix is all a lie. You know, so I, I kind of think where my head is at right now is that I, I don't know that religion really even exists. I just think that, you know, they they gave labels to time frames and beliefs of those time frames based on whatever it was to control people. And if you're not willing to let that be wrong, I believe that where I am right now, I'm willing to let everything I know be wrong because I, I, I want to know what's right. I yeah. totally want to know what's right, because right. the only way we hand a better, more evolved world to the next generation is we have to be able to modify it so it's equal for everybody. And the only way we can do that is if people are open-minded enough to be wrong and to give back or give up what they have in the middle class, right? Uh, in the upper class, even in the lower class, the people who have nothing. Yeah. And to share those resources. And, and so... You have to have extreme open mindedness, I think, to want equality. Other than that, it's pretty much just a talking point. It's something nice to say. It, it makes you feel good about yourself to say that you love everybody and you're equal. But are you really willing to give up what you have to make sure that people across the world you know, are, are at that same level? And so that's why you know, religion is a dangerous indoctrination. It's, it, it is, it's another dangerous one. Race is one. Religion's one. Uh, the nationalism, that's one. But they're all based. The left is one. The right is one. You know, they're all based on these concepts that we got it right or we're closer to right than what you are. And so we're willing to be wrong on a few things to get back at you. And that's, you know, not to wrap it back around to the whole, you know, no, Kanye, no, no, whatever understand. thing. It's, people are right. People, <clears throat> they're fighting because they want to control you. That's all I see it. The left wants to control the right. The right wants to control the left. Um, it happens in, in other countries. And to me, oh, somebody just said it. Sharon just said it. I got to put that up. They're all cult. They're all cults. That's what it comes down to. They're all <laughs> cults. That, that, that there is a human being that runs these damn entities, and they have the ability to tell other people what to do to control them. And you got all the other followers who got their robes. Well, that's what I see, man. <laughs> Sure. They got, got their the room. You know, they, 
you know, to get the chicken and get the blood, get the chicken on the blood, drip it on the head, face, rub it up. Uh, well, it's some, yo, it's some crazy cults in the history, man. Watch out for those cults. Man. Watch out. They believe you. But no, it's, it's kind of interesting because that's a little bit true in a way. Like, it's called Tish, I guess you could say, but that's what happens when you have uh, a mass of people at the mercy of misinformation. And the only reason that we're at the mercy of misinformation is because we've been misinformed the whole way, you know. And when we've been, when there has, when there has been the presence of people who has tried to inform us, what has happened? Extermination, you know. You will get ex- if you get to the point of where you're trying to inform people to the way that the uh, entire mass of people can productively step outside of that which controls us currently, you will be exterminated. But we still have plenty of options to, you know, get the right education, get the right understanding, and get the right type of organization without the coaches activity, without the you have to place your power in someone else's hand type of mentality. Because this is what people don't understand. People have to understand that you are an individual that has much to contribute to the process of how we change the things that are happening in this current day and age. Mm-hmm. But people don't think, I guess what I'm trying to say is people don't think that they're, they can find ways to do this or do that to just, you know, change the energies that are all around us. But individuals have the in the, you have the, in the energy, energy that you have to create positive, uh, the positive aura around the environment around us. You have it, we have it, I have it, you have it. We have to utilize it. But right. we're so caught up in the mentality that we have to be productive for the system. We have to be productive for the system, and we have to keep the system in operation as it is operating or functioning now, or else we'll all be running around scrambling for what to do and this people think we're really going to be running around scrambling with their heads chopped off if we shut down the government or if we you know put a <laughs> stranglehold on the banks or if we put a stranglehold on the corporations and or if we just tell them that we're going to stop the means of production people think that we're going to be running around scrambling with our ne- necks chopped off but yeah, we're not going to happen because as individuals we are adaptive to the things that go on around us. so right. when we it's like this. When your back is against the wall, you're not going to just go down helplessly. You're not just going to cower and just be like, oh, we can't do it. No, I'm not. No. Your instincts kick in. So where you're thinking like, oh, shit, so if I don't got food like this, I got to do something to get X, Y, Z. I have to make this happen to get through this yeah. and that, this and that. I have to wait. These people are suffering here. Well, I got, I got a mind to think of things I can do to help them get through. We're going to work together because that's human nature. We're not going to, people think we're going to be savages in the form. Oh, I got to go steal from him and steal from them, and we got to just steal and pillage everything. Yeah. If anything, we'll be pillaging the corporations that have been pillaging from us the entire time. You know, that's, that's and, where it's going to come from. I, and, hey, brother, I got a list, man. I got, I got, li- I got a list of where all the solar panels are. <laughs> <laughs> you all got a list. No one of where the fields at. Okay, yeah, you know what? <laughs> this is the thing, though. This is what's funny. People I'm gonna have some lights, man. The government. People are okay with the government stealing from them, stealing from nature, stealing from the yeah. world. But now, I'm not saying go steal. I'm not saying go steal. Oh, I am. Saying, I am. When, I am. I am. Oh no, so I, I, I am. I am. I'm, I'm not. Listen, I'm gonna tell yet, you. Yet, Je- Jesus said. Yet, Jesus said, "Go see it." <laughs> My Buddha. Buddha said, yeah, "Go yeah, steal." No. All of when, if when, people dying. If the, if the if the old lady next to you is dying because she doesn't have heat, she can't do no cooking or nothing. Yeah, Jesus that. said it's a scripture. Yeah, it's in John seventy two thirty seven. It says, "Go <laughs> thou steal it the solar panel from the road, put it on the roof, and get that old lady some cooking, <laughs> some food." That's the that old lady some energy, from it, real talk. Get the old lady some energy so she can turn her oven on. You can't. You can't but you know, but you let me let me jump in because you you're, you're right. You know, if you look back at the examples of times of great stress, if human beings actually have food, they got water, 
and they have a place where they can camp out, stay, sleep somewhere in a house or whatever, Mm -hmm. we always pull together. We don't fall apart. I mean, you have a few people who will, you know, go out and they want to do some stealing. They want to act crazy or dumb. Mm -hmm. But most times we come together like 9-11. What happened? You know, a lot of people didn't go to work the next day. The Arab lines were shut down. You know, the the the, the country came to a halt. People right. came together. Yeah. People became one. They now they came together on the wrong, stupid, dumb on stuff. The and they decided stuff. to go they and bomb the destroyed planet, they they <laughs> kill five million people. But that wasn't their idea. The first idea that people had, Chris, was to come together. The first What's idea up? was back to nature. It was love. It wasn't religion. It wasn't race. It wasn't any of that nonsense. Everybody put the flags on the car that mm-hmm. had the American flag flying. Remember all of that? You all know, right. that, you all know, right. but but because their right. base, their, their base indoctrination kicked in, which was Americanism, right? What happens when we have a base indoctrination of humanism, right? Mm-hmm. When a disaster mm-hmm. happens, mm-hmm. we pull together as a planet and we fix it. If the government shuts down tomorrow, we'll be fine. You yeah, know, but what one of the things I tell people, this is why I tell everybody, grow some food, man. Get some seeds, put them in yeah. the ground, learn how to feed yourself, learn how to take care of yourself. It's not if some disaster comes in our lifetime. This isn't about, it is. not about you. it's before. not about us. Hey, this is about since the beginning of time, we knew how to take care of ourselves. Mm-hmm. Right now, we all got diapers on. And that's what it, it comes down to. We, we, we all got we that. We, we took, wow. we, we was like, you know wow. what? We were on the potty, Chris. <laughs> wow. We, we were on the potty. We, we were pooping. We were, we were happy back in the, what, the, uh, the 1800s, early 19. I like, we can potty in. I can potty by myself. I can potty in. You know how the kids get all happy. They did. Everybody, every parent got the potty Everywhere. song. Y'all know the potty song. I like y'all know the potty song. We all dance. We say, y'all the potty. I was sitting with my kids. They, y'all the potty. So anyway, so we are good, right? We evolved to a point where we learn how to use the bathroom by ourselves, right? We could feed ourselves, we could build right. houses and structures, right. took care of our neighbors, had strong Kids communities. Kids now, cooking. mind you, slavery and racism and colonization was a problem, but we could take care of ourselves at right. that time. And so now we've decided, you know what? That potty thing, man, that's a little difficult. That's you know, you gotta wipe your butt. You got to you got to think about when something about to come out. You got to stop doing what you got to do. Go plant a garden. I don't want to do that no more. You know what? And then corporations came along with you and said, look, but we got diapers, y'all. Y'all put diapers on. You don't have to worry about it. And we just we couldn't yeah. wait, man. We put them diapers on, strapped them up. Now we just walk around. We got life diapers. Diapers of life. For <laughs> right. life. Right. And now we're thinking there's no way we can go back to using a potty, man. It's just it's too hard. We need to just keep the diapers on. Things aren't going to collapse. I mean, we it's, it's a crazy analogy, but the thing is, is we have to learn. We have to go back to the bare basics of knowing how to take care of ourselves. Bad The, the, the bad time is unavoidable. It is coming. Yeah. It is coming, not because the system is broken. The system was designed to collapse. And when it collapsed, the bankers who built that system are going to come back in and give you another system that's going to collapse on your great, great grandkids or your grandkids or even your kids. Right. The whole idea is so that they can stay in power. And that's how the Great Depression worked. But if you go back and you look at the Great Depression, people took care of each other. You know, there was a lot of love. They were they started growing a lot of food because there was a basic concept of how to do that. Mm-hmm. Now, mind you, they made a mistake and they let the bankers put their next world together. Yeah. They you know, but if we bad. can if we can get in here quick enough. And, and and I think somebody posted in the room, you can't really wake anybody up. Enlightenment kind of comes on your own. And I agree with that. But if we can wake enough people up, not by giving them enlightenment, but by giving them love, Mm -hmm. they will become enlightened. Like, I think enlightenment has a recipe, right? Enlightenment has a recipe of not being ignorant to people. Energy, it's about energy, it's probably energy. Right, showing people love and and, and maybe it builds up into this energy, but our basis isn't telling people what to do. And, and yelling at them and calling them out. Our basis is just loving people. Sometimes you do have to call them out to show them some love. Yeah, truth. But, be truthful but, with them, you know? Yeah, that's being truthful like, with them, but you put like them love, 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 love because you care about them, you yeah. care about their kids. You have a little more information than they do. You know that this system is collapsing because it was designed to collapse. And when it does, 
if yeah. our base is humanism, the next world we build can be a paradigm shift that works for everybody. It can be equal. We're not talking about communism or socialism. If anybody thinks that, we're not. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not even sure you can. Yeah, relate. socialism is like another wave of no. Like people don't understand right. that. Like, no, it's, just, it's, just like, it's all part of the same systematic government control. And like, I mean, you can have you got to, people have to understand that you're too diverse to be placed in that box. Like you, we are diverse as just beings to be placed in the box of oh, we're socialists, we're conservatives, we're liberals, we're progressive. We're too diverse to be that, you know, because we're fluctuating always you know we're fluctuating as the atmospheres around us fluctuate you know what i mean and our understanding differentiates uh in terms of the situation you know so it's like for people to just say as an absolute that oh i'm a socialist and it's like come on you, you're religious to the point where you're conservative you know so how can you be really really socialist if you're like going to church every sunday and you have the same views as some of these republican church members that you sit around you know what i mean but i get it they don't have uh an open mind to see that there is more than just what they've been told you know and it's like that's why i realized that you can have to, you have to go back further and further you know if we're talking about anything if we're talking about police brutality you have to go back to the core of police brutality which was when the kkk figured that they can infiltrate the police forces in America because they controlled the government in America. So they just was like, okay, you can, you guys don't have to go around hanging and doing this to black folk, just become police officers. And we already control the policies, so guess what? You're going to be able to become police officers wherever we want you to become police officers at, you know? And this is why we have to talk about dismantling some of the systems of operation because to the root of what they are, is evil you know and that's what people don't understand we can't accept evil if we're talking about living a life of love and living a life of uh, i guess equality or just unity and coming together to find a way to live sustainable so this is about sustainable living for all people and you know all families in the sense of thinking sustainably so where you're open to thinking without uh deceptive and divisive misinformation i would say because that's what we are surrounded by and this nation that we we, we are facing is deceptive information so it's like even your educational system people love it i mean I, I i like it for the way that the kids can be together but it is formulated on competition you know but the, the underlying formulation is psychological control of process because it's not about what they're um, around learning. Like, people think that, oh, sending your kids to school is good and this and that because it's X, Y, because it's, uh, they're learning and they're around other kids and, you know, they, you can get some good out of it. But they don't understand what's beneath the surface of all that, which is psychological control, time control, structurization control. Uh, conformity. You know, you, they're teaching the kids to conform to powers that they shouldn't conform to. Because at the end of the day, the elders are supposed to be those that cater to the kids as guides. They're not supposed to be giving the kids absolutes and say, this is this and this is that. No, they're supposed to guide them and say, this can be and this is what was. Or this is what we know to be existed and this is what maybe has the potential to exist. We're supposed to open the kids up to innovation not shut them down to just the barriers you know because american education places barriers around the innovation of children because they say this is only what you should know because this is what we learn in america so now you're learning this stuff in america which is blocking your understanding of what's going around the globe the world you know what i mean sorry for saying globe because i don't know some of y'all might not think it's the globe whatever who knows what is it that's another thing you got to understand too you know but people yeah have taken the indoctrinated, I guess this is what I'm saying, the indoctrinated truth, if there's such a thing. There's such, I, I think there's a such thing as the indoctrinated truth, which is the use of historical beliefs, facts, and understandings that were created in, I guess, these hostile environments as ultimate understanding of life. You know, so it's like 
when we talk about black and white, like I said, people just stick to the American eye way of looking at black and white. And they don't go to the core that black and white wasn't even brought about until about a certain time. You know, like I said earlier. So it's like they don't even go back further than that. And to the it core was of evil. It's was great. Great. evil. I want to I want to hit that for a minute All right. to make sure people understand, you know, kind of what I, I I'm pretty sure we're both saying the same thing. You know, okay. your your concepts of race were given to you. They don't exist. You come from a culture, a ethnicity, and you can take it back a certain timeline. You can take mm-hmm. it back and stop wherever you want. You can stop in the 1600s. You can stop in the 1100s. You can stop in the 800s. But if you go to the root of it, it's all going to be in northern Africa somewhere, right? We all came from the same people. Some of us walk different ways. And so, you know, if you want to take it back to just the 1600s and say, I'm Irish, that's up to you. That's your thing. I'm Kenyan. That's up to you. That's your thing. But I think what we're saying is when you take it all the way back past the enemy who created and gave you that label because where the label came from, it came from corporations, right? Corporations had the need to separate out people. And the easiest way to do that, because you had slaves and you had other, was by color. You're mm-hmm. white, you're black. And it was, an, it, was, it was a very easy construct. So if you're still like embracing those narratives of division and race, you're supporting the very evil that we're trying to fight to get the hell out of this, right? Yeah. That yeah. division. I mean, even I, I, Chris, I even hate using the words because just using what? the very words, you're separating yourself from Which somebody one? else that Which you one? need Which to be closer to. Huh? The, the, the colors, the, 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 these ridiculous. Well, I don't know. Listen. I'm and you're not even black. You're brown. Look, hold on, you're not look. even brown. <laughs> it's I'm going to give you some real stuff. Last year sometime, right? I'm trying to yeah. post on Facebook, but I'm trying to post in the way that I could make the post relatable to people. And I don't want to post black or white or colored or any of that shit. I'm like, how the hell am I going to relate to the people if I don't even want to use the constructs that they created to make to the people? Because <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. I'm trying to say the black people, but I don't want to say black people. You know what I mean? I'm trying to say, you know what I mean? So it's like, do I say people of color? Do I say color? And then I'm just trying to do I'm like, yo, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just it's not going to fight it. I'm going to just say black people. You know what I mean? It's like people. Just... It's, it's crazy. It's I mean, just, how many things went through all these things? It's just simple understanding the people. Color. I didn't, want to, look, I didn't even want to say white people, bro. I don't even like saying white people. And it's like, I, I don't it's know what else. I don't even like saying Caucasian. But I mean, well, that's the history of it is the, the, the people of color. I guess so. You got to say it like that. Like I don't, I don't know what up. What do I? I want to create my own words, you know. But then people are gonna really look at me like I'm crazy. And then I'm like, you, who's gonna listen to you? Like, like I don't know. This is what we need to understand is that we can do whatever we need to move on. You know, we can right. create whatever we need to create to move forward in a way that is fit for every people to be uh committed to unity and together but you know because if we continue with the social constructs that was created by the 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 divisive nature of the men that knew what they would be used for we fit you know because we can't continue to say all right we're going to let black and white still be but then we're going to allow mainstream media to talk about black and white all damn day hollywood to portray black people this way and portray white people this way all damn day it's racism and it's, and it's racism, like they're embedding that in our mind, but yes. we're not. We're what we're not doing is shutting that down. You know, we have to shut it down. Yeah, we have to shut it down. We have to turn the TV off. At a have to turn off. That, you have to turn off that narrative. You have, yes. it, it, and it, it's hard because guess what? Like I said, it's the environment. You got this whole the whole certain groups i mean certain areas are full just suburbs straight suburbs some some country or whatever the case is non-existent to diversity okay do you think they are getting the information they need about colored people in the way that they can just embrace them with love they're not getting the information they need about colored people because they ain't no colored people around them really you know what i'm saying so how when it comes to applying their understanding to the national landscape how do you think they go about interacting with colored people when they finally do come around colored people? You know, 
And right. this is what we have to battle against, I guess. False yeah. narratives, false way yeah. of perceiving people, false prejudices. And yeah. the way we do that is by, like others have said, I guess in the comments, like we have to, you know, act in love. We have to communicate in love. We have to think in love. You know, we can't think to uh, boost the hate of others, I guess. I think Buddha Cat made a good comment on that. You know what I mean? And it's like, we can't boost the hate of others. We have to act and show uh, expressions of love. You know, because love is not one thing that just absolutes to say, oh, this is love. You have to love. You know, love is different things. Love is action. Different actions, you know, different activities. Are ways. Love is, people think love is like, oh, I have to love somebody and, like in love and all of this. They've distorted what love is. You know, yeah. love is it's, it's different varieties of love, if you must. You know, if we want to talk about really what love is, like, but we don't know what love is truly because we've been indoctrinated to believe what love is. And we have to, we've been indoctrinated to believe their hate, you know? And that is what you understand when you break the layers and shed the layers. You see that love can win, but Love with understanding is what's needed to prevail, you know, because people can have love, but if they lack understanding, they'll still block, they'll, they'll have the, it's, like I was saying, it's confusing because it's the wrong type of love. You know, people may have the wrong, people may have love, but they, they will see love through the narrow-minded vision, which they've been indoctrinated to believe love is, and to not see, like, cause you, you know, that you'll love your family, you know what I mean? You'll love your family. Anybody yeah. outside of that, you don't give a fuck about them. But you think that's love, and that's, and that's love. That's all to me. You say, yo, yeah. I love, I have love for people. I love yeah. people. What are you talking? I love my family. But outside of that, you don't give a fuck about what happens to other people. But yeah. yet you love everybody. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. what we're selling at because the understanding of what I, these words are. Right. Is I'm, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm just going to make sure my kids have food. I'm going to make sure that they have a place to stay. I'm going to make sure that they, they go to college. Yours. I don't care about yeah, it. You're, you're I'm, 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 I'm not going to, I'm not going to give them something, you know, I'm I, maybe I give them, I donate, make me feel we'll good. Donate a couple, and we'll and I'm going to say I'm a loving person. <laughs> you're not a loving person. If your kids have food and the kids in gaming don't have food, you have no love in you. Like, right. I think, I, I don't think we, 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 you know, like we say, Oh, Oh, I'm showing this person love, but by doing that, I'm allowing another person to live in hate. And mm -hmm. I don't think that's real love. You know, um, brother, brother uh, Gelm said something important, right? He said, um, his color doesn't exist. And I believe oh, yeah, that right we I have like to fight one. these that things at a conceptual level, right? Like not fight necessarily the name that was given because that's why they kept flipping the names. Everybody keep flipping the names. I'm Armenian American, I'm this American, I'm this American. Everyone keeps flipping no, the names for political that's correctness. That's what Adrian is saying. It's the conceptual level. Does it actually exist or yeah. is it a spectrum? Like, you know, to be honest with you, the brown here is not the same as the brown over here. Right. And the bottom of my feet, they, they're Caucasian. Yeah. I'm going to tell yeah. you, I see them all they're the Caucasian. time as I'm walking they're in Caucasian. the yard and then they get a little no. brown. But, the but it doesn't right even exist. That's the bar. Why no, do we bar. You're right. That's the bar. He said colors don't even exist. We are different reflections of wavelength to the optic nerve. I mean, like, why we, we got fools. We don't, we don't have science. Cool. We don't even know science. We don't even like, and this is something that I, that's what would help. That's what's helping me break down this understanding. You know what I mean? I started to realize like, what is the pigmentation of the skin and how we see colors? And I realized that the colors around us are part of the distractions as well. Right? But we don't even know that. You know what I mean? Some of the colors that we are are comfortable with viewing and love in society they ain't part of the distractions. But and and it's it's kind of interesting, but it's so much deeper the connection that we have to nature but what we have to do is break free from the uh i don't know like because when you talk about american education people get offended to where they're like oh i'm smart i went to college what are you trying to say i'm dumb and this and that and blah blah, blah. But it's like no it's not, i'm not trying to say that but what i'm trying to say is that you should be open to understand that that doesn't mean you're you have knowledge that doesn't mean you're educated. That doesn't mean you're smart. What it means is that you took them a lot of time out your life to learn certain things that you can apply to the 
narrow-minded vision that you've been given. You know what I mean? Because people, the narrow-minded vision, they don't escape it. So the reality is there's nothing outside of that. So when you educate yourself in American understanding, whatever, and you graduate summa cum laude from the private school or you get the dean's list from this school, you feel the, the, the instant gratification is amazing. You know, and I realize that that instant gratification means you're accepted now in society. I'm accepted as having accomplished that of my youth years now that I'm somebody in society. You know what I mean? So now that makes you look down upon others, but you don't realize that. Cause because I made now, in, you didn't in the make it. of all those that may, may never obtain such, right? I may never get to even try to attempt to obtain such. Right. How do you think they feel? How divided right. to the poor are they? Because they see you in the expression of your gratification of what you've accomplished in this narrow-minded field of view, and they take that to heart. You know, so we're hurting each other in many more ways than what we actually think and perceive because our yeah. thought patterns don't allow us to you know break down and shed the layers of confusion because it's, it's, it's really to me i understand that it's confusion more than like hate it's not really as much as it's not the hate as much as it is the confusion you know because mm. i realized that people to the core are not hateful you know people are not hateful i don't think people are hateful to the core I think people no. are loving. I think we are all loved. We were born. We're not. Yep. Our parents didn't birth. Your mother, you don't come out the womb and hate. You come out the no. womb and love, nature, all beauty and all glory. The hate comes when, as a child, you are forced to take on to these, you know, these tools, these constructs of a society that divide you from who you are or who you want to be. You know, or it, it takes you, it really, it takes you away from who you, nature may have already formulated for you to think. You know, it's like every everybody is born, I think nature has a calling for everyone that's birth in this existence. But we don't even <clears throat> we don't even know nature to the core of understanding to even process all that. So we can't even process that just thought because we don't even know nature, you know? But we're birthed in love. We and hate here. doesn't come until we start to learn certain things. You know, the hate doesn't get processed in, in our minds. It's people are like, oh, you, we are born hateful. We are born this way. It, it comes from birth. You think you, you, it's human nature. All right. The human nature is to adapt to environment. The environment. If had, yeah, if we had environments of love, what the hell do you think people would be adapting to? Exactly. Which, which is why... Love. Which is why I want to jump in there. So I'm going to say something crazy, man. I don't actually believe in government anymore. I don't. Um, like we're talking about police officers and peace officers. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mm -hmm. believe in any of that. We mm -hmm. don't actually need any of it. The only reason it's there is because the people who engineered our environment, they either done such a horrible job that it creates violent people that need police officers because they rob and steal and kill each other. Mm -hmm. Or they did it intentionally because it would make a destabilized, fearful society. So we would beg for more government and beg for more police. And I'm, I'm spot on with you. We are creatures of love. We are born with love. And if you don't understand that, just look at a child. Look at any kid, anywhere they're born, anywhere on this planet. They are little creatures of joy. In fact, you have so much. They have so much love emanating from them, these little baby things. They will bring people to your knees. There are very few human beings. You have to have a lot of hate to look at a baby and not feel that, you know, watch it smile. Little, little ha, 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 you know, when it does its thing because it, it, it emanates love. It doesn't discover hatred, violence, anger, or anything until we expose it to the environment that has been legislated for mm -hmm. us by these colonizing governments. And that's what right. they all are. You can call them whatever you want, socialism, communism, whatever, ism, ism, ism. They broke down the, the, the cultural tribal ways we all live, communal, working together, and because they wanted to control larger swaths of human beings. So right. we can pretend, I think we pretend to ourselves that government is a good thing. It's not a good thing. We pretend to ourselves that government's a natural thing. 
It's not a natural thing. There is probably nothing more unnatural than government and controlling free creatures. We, when you raise a child in love and abundance, it doesn't want to fight. And we have evidence of that. The, the, the scientific evidence I always love are the bonobos and the chimps. I mentioned that to you, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. The same exact DNA. One grew up with abundance in an area of abundance. Another uh, evolved in the areas of scarcity and violence with gorillas. The ones that grew up with the bonobos, there's no violence in their community. Right. There's no death. There's no murder. There's no right. chimpicide. There's none. All of that stuff completely disappeared yeah. because we... I, this is what I think, man. I, I'm going to tell you, tell me if this is crazy. I have some crazy thoughts sometimes, man. I honestly think that human beings were put here to fix the planet. I think that human beings and the way our brains work, we were mixed with some DNA somewhere, some, some ancient genetic engineer, alien, whatever it was. And it gave us a piece of it, a chromosome or something. So our brains developed to evolve to a point where we realize we have we realize where wild comes from. We realize where violence comes from, where we realize where hatred that it comes from scarcity. And at some point in evolution, we would understand how to fix that for every species on this planet. And we can do that right now. The only reason the, the, the polar bear is wild is because we let it be. The only yeah. reason the lion kills is because we let it. The only right, reason right. human beings kill is we let it. Wolves stop killing. They're called yeah. dogs. The only reason that anything dies on this planet in misery, pain, and death is because we let it. Yeah, we we, choose, it. we yeah. choose to not evolve the planet because we keep giving power to people who don't want to evolve it. They just want your resources. They want your money and they want your land. And we keep voting for these people. We keep saying we need these government things and we don't. Go for it, bro. That's me. That's the that is, yeah, I, I got to go. But yeah, that is the, what I wanted to hear right there. That is exactly what I need to hear because that is so true. We cheat ourselves. We are in denial of what we are truly capable of because we just take, like I said, we are, we are so used to taking someone else's word for it, you know, and we never really probably thought, many people never thought that is the possibility to live without government. Think about how scary that is. Many people haven't even thought no. that it's a possibility. And when they, like and look, when they do like think this. it, guess what? They really actually think that it's savagery that's all there is they think all it's going to be is death and destruction and of this kind of that kind of but it goes to show how confused we are as people and how much removed we are from knowing who we are as individuals you know and when we get back to the level of understanding who we are as individuals, we will all start to realize what we can do to shift this or shift that or change the energies around our environment, but also to the inner environment that is interconnected to the whole, you know, because many people think they know what it takes to get this done or that done or X, Y, Z, but for everybody, it's different. That's what I'm real. For every individual, it's it takes something different maybe for me than it would take from someone else because my path towards bringing about this understanding or the, the, the re realization that we have been misguided and we can live or think differently is different from someone else, you know? But we are all like a source of light, I must say, or a source of different energy than what the status quo may relate to the people, you know, and we have to utilize that together in the way that is, I guess, kind of say like, you know, constructive and bringing us together, because that's what we have to, we have to start banding together in numbers, you know, because this doesn't work if we don't have the right numbers of thoughts, you know, we have to get people to think clearly, with clarity, but I don't mean when people say, when people say this, like, oh, you want people to think just like you and this and that, like, no. I need people to think different than me. Different. But 
I don't need people to be stuck in the old thinking that got us here. Yeah. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? That is what yeah. that is what I'm trying to say and relate to people. I yeah. I can't or we can't get to the proper solutions that is surrounded by nature and yeah. uh the clarity of understanding who we are as individuals if people can't get out of the old thinking that we have to rely on pop government. We have to rely on find others people thinking because this is what we're doing now other people are thinking for many of the majority you know and we don't talk about that but other people are thinking for you so when it comes to political things you're not thinking for yourself it's clarity you're aligned with socialism you're aligned with liberalism you're aligned with progressivism you're aligned with conservatism so yep. each they're, they're, different they're saying you're nra this is what you will think you're yeah. black this is what you'll you exactly. think you're poor. This is what you'll think. You need health care. This is what you, you need. You need health care from us. You need health care from us. You don't need to go to your community and surround yourself by people and educate yourself and educate the youth. See, this is another thing I realized. There are a lot of young doctors. There's way more doctors than what the, the statistics say. You know, way more doctors. But you have to be a doctor on their terms. Okay? This is the trick. You have to be a doctor on their terms, and people believe that. You have to be a scientist on their terms, and people believe that. You have to be a, 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 an economic or a business financier on their terms. Yep. On you know, their you terms. You know what's funny? I know a lot of brothers in the hood that is much more inclined in business and economics than people that have went to school for it, bro. I'm telling you this right now. The, the, but the, they, they don't want the competition. I'm trying to they, tell you. They, they don't they, want that competition. It's if in the competition their, is present, right. the understanding will be present to know that they don't need these systems. You got to see that. That's where it comes. Like when we get the understanding and the competition, like when we start to develop our own production, when we start to develop our own narrative, we'll be start. We'll we we have to utilize the understanding of the system and how it operates to step mm -hmm. outside. Of it. That's what I'm saying. You know, we have to take their corruption. We have to take not the corruption, but we have to take the way that they went to loopholes, and we have to take the way that they utilize this understanding that to use it against them. Okay, we don't need to say, "Oh, we need to go and make." No, we have to use it against them to where we can uplift the people and each other on alternative ways. You know, in sustainable ways that create innovation in the youth because we're not creating innovation in the youth. No. What we're doing is telling them this we're, is all you can be. The right. ceiling is here. You can't go higher. Don't try we're, to go higher. Making, yeah. You know what I mean? We're and, making them worse monsters. So I'm gonna yeah, say this. I'm gonna, give, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give this last comment, and then I'll let you wrap up for us. I know you got to go. So, so uh, this is a new name for me. I think Sister Linda Larkin. She just said the Earth herself is evolving too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that is why it is important what you just said. The earth is evolving and we only got so much time to give a shot at this before we run out of time. The earth is trying to get rid of us. The earth, any, anything that's cancerous, that overgrows, that is destructive, the earth has always gotten rid of. And if the earth isn't going to do it, what you say, it's a volcano, mother nature, comets, bad stuff is coming. So this cause that we took in evolution to be greedy little monsters has to go away. What you said is that when you talk to people, you're just trying to get people to think like you. That is absolutely not what I know. It's not right. what you're trying to do. Nope. It's not what I'm trying to do. Nope. What I'm trying not to do all. is I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make you a Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> this is so somebody I just lost somebody like, what did he just yeah, say? Radical as like, ever, you know? I'm <laughs> trying to make you a Kanye because not because yeah. I will believe anything that comes out of your mouth, right, right. but because I want you to take your experiences, go away come back with something critical thought based based on your experiences come to me and say guess what i learned i learned that it's a good idea to support trump that he just poops rainbows and he's got angel wings and he's flying he's fighting the deep state he's gonna save the whole world and i can give you my experience and say in my experience the billionaires have never come to save the poor people right nobody is all good no one actually has angel wings and i smell poop and it's never smelled like some 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 mint. It's just never done that before. 
So but that's yeah, how we that's how we evolve as a collective to become better by convincing other people to stop taking on what someone else is telling them and go do it themselves. Your example you gave with with the doctors was spot on as always. If we had doctors who were still healers who went out in the jungle, found different medicinals, tried this, tried holistic, they can try chemicals too. I'm not against chemicals, you know, then we would have the hundreds of thousands of different schools of knowledge, things being utilized, treatments coming out. We would be significantly healthier today than what we've ever been. But because they all got walked into being adherent to doing it one way, they're no longer healers. They're all chemists. One hundred percent of them are synthetic chemists. And any who try to venture out of that, they disbar, they, they take away their license <laughs> or they kill them. So right. I, I, I wanted to just give Linda the last comment. Look like a new yeah, sister. Like Welcome that. to the room. And it was it was very deep. The planet's evolving, but we've stopped evolving for a couple thousand years after this colonization started. And if we don't pick the ball back up and start creating this a, a diverse communal species, we're going to be in big trouble. I'm going to yeah, let you have the last word, brother. I know you got to run. I just love that comment, too, man. The Earth herself is evolving, too. And it's like when you know, you take your mind, like I said earlier, when you look up at the sky, we all see the same thing, you know, and we all have so much more in common than what we are told or what we are led to believe. And we have to get back to understanding that we have so much more in common because we live around the same environment, you know, and this is the natural environment I speak of, not necessarily the man-made construct or the man-made government or the operation system of operations that are going along because the evolution is natural you know it should be natural it should come in a way that we have adaptability you know and by that i mean like we have a choice to structurize ourselves with what nature is evolving as you know but we first have to get an understanding of what that means and the choices that we only presented ourselves has been the choices of man, man's government, man's reality, man's word, man's country, black and white, rich or poor, uh, American versus North Korean, Trump versus Hillary, liberal progressives, all these things, you know, this is not our reality. You know, our reality is understanding what we are in the course of this existence. And what we can do to not only help ourselves, but help others around us thrive within this natural environment and this, the, the, the existence that we live upon, you know? And people want to say that thinking like this is downgrading technology or the modernization of the times or whatever. It is. This couldn't be further from the truth because we can utilize some of the modernizations of technology to go along with a deeper understanding of the natural environments around us and what the earth has naturally created for us. You know, because I think that we were supposed to have some types of technology to combine with nature in a way that can take us to higher understanding or, but not just yet, but in this other possibility. You know, we've allowed NASA, we've allowed all these other groups or whatever to define what everything is, you know, and that's where we stop. Like you said, with the religion, the same thing when it comes to like the space and food and um, medicine. We let them put the stop gap up and say, look, this is what we know. You listen to us. You don't know anything. You won't ever know anything. And guess what? Just live like that. We'll tell you what it is. So we've allowed them to tell us this. Basis. We've allowed them to tell us what medicine is. We've allowed them to tell us what religion is and so on and so forth. We've allowed them to tell us what education is. Yeah. We all have to find our individually unique purpose. But we can never really find that if we don't give back the misinformation, the, the, the indoctrination, I would say. But the, the the belief that we shouldn't question. We have to question everything. 
it even when it seems uncomfortable that you question it. Question it just because you can question. It. You know what I mean? You have the ability to question because guess what? Can't nobody tell you what you can do. That's the see, that's the beauty I really understood, Gerard. You, you ain't the boss of me. Huh? You ain't the boss of me. And that will use the boss of me. You can't question what I want to think about. You can't question what I want to ask. You you honestly, you shouldn't either. Because you should want to do it yourself. You should want to right. question these things that are going on yourself. You should want to ask the even if they seem dumb. See, people like to try to do this. Well, that's a dumb question. That's <laughs> There's dumb no such thing as a dumb question. question. Yeah. When I was young, they said no question is the dumb question. When no, I was young, that's what I heard. It was just experience. In my experience, yeah. I never saw that, so this is a good question. It's a good question from their perspective, but it's this idea that I'm smarter than you, you're dumb, so it's a dumb question, and there's no such thing. You know, no uh, somebody thing. said Kanye's an idiot, and I agree he is, but what I'm saying is his experience as a young, wealthy young man made him very, he gave him experiences go, no. that made him stupid. You can't so, say that either, Gerard. Yeah. You can't say Kanye's an idiot because Kanye, in the, in the, well, in the sense of the he had an we idiot use. experience. The, sense of the words we use, yeah, but look, yeah. think about it like this. In the sense of human and human being, Kanye's not an idiot. He's just living his best life that he can live, right? And mm. he could be, in our eyes, he looked crazy. You know what I mean? What the hell is he? And, and it look, make no that's sense. the thing. Right. We all it's have a different understandings. You know I mean? yeah. We all have different understandings. We all perceive things. But yeah. is that really our reality? When you think, when you start to think about it like that, you realize like Kanye's not an idiot. No, Kanye's just a, I, I don't want to say victim, but he's just a product of that. Reality. No, that's the right he word. Is. He is. You know I mean? I he's a victim. victim. I don't know what, he I don't know what it is. But he's a product of that lifestyle. You know, yes. that lifestyle creates. He's a, we so. all are. We are all products of our lifestyle. Yeah, we're that's what it is. So like, you know, but we have to break, we have to break free from the thought that we have to only be there. You know what I mean? We have to, right. that's all we can be is the product of the environment or the lifestyle that I was, like Christianity, you know, when I broke free from that to say, look, I want to examine all religions and understand yeah. all of them. And it's hard to break free when you're surrounded by that. You know, so how can you break free from American when you're surrounded by that? You know, that's what people got to start thinking about, you know? I. I got to get out of here, though, Joe. I just ran right. off of the mic. So go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. Go, brother, man. It was another good conversation. I appreciate you your time, too, brother. Yeah, I appreciate and your everybody. time. And everybody in the room, you guys have a good Sunday. And I guess the wrap-up is, that, you know, the earth is always changing. It's always evolving. And and if we, if we don't restart evolving... Uh, our kids are going to pay the heaviest price. Our grandkids are going to pay the heaviest price. And I don't think that's such a good idea. But anyway, listen, brother, love you to death. Love everybody in the Thank room. Thank you, brother. Appreciate Y'all it, man. Be live. Day. This is your first. You got to be live. It's cool. You got the chat. See, I like that. You know what I mean? The, the, yeah. The time I like it, and yeah, that's all good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't do my backgrounds, but I'm going to play. I know, them. right? Yeah. I like you it. Switch so it up. That's the thing. You switch it up any time you want, though. You know what I mean? The background is where it's at, though. I love the background. You throw it up like, man, you know what I mean? Get your yeah. <laughs> Uh, that, that's my little fantasy world, man. I go to my <laughs> fantasy world when I'm sick of these Democrats and Republicans bombing everybody. <laughs> I can go to the garden when I need to because people will drive me crazy. All right. Anyway, hey, brother, you have a great right, day. Good, man. Have a good one. All right, bro. Thank All you right. again. Thank Appreciate you, everybody. It. Love y'all. Bye-bye.